I'm going to tell you in this presentation about the interaction between the urban climate and the climate change and about the uh, strategies that cities adopt to face uh, those problems. Town changes the environment due to uh, anthropic uh, activity. For instance, uh, the natural covers have become waterproof. And because the environment is being modified, the town is also where we can find a very specific climate, which is usually called uh, the urban climate. One of the most well-known processes is the so-called uh, heat island uh, phenomenon, urban heat island, meaning that in town the temperatures are higher. Air temperatures in town are several degrees greater than in the surrounding rural areas. Now, this phenomenon of... Uh, Urban heat island is more intense at night, and it is amplified during uh, very specific events, such as uh, heat waves or during the uh, summer when there is a lot of sun. It happened during the 2003 heat wave uh, in the Paris area. During the heat wave, temperatures were very high over the whole area for several days in a row, and because there was this uh, urban heat island phenomenon, temperatures were 10 degrees higher inside Paris than outside, meaning that temperatures did not go down at night or there was not enough cooling. This added to the uh, sanitary impact of an exceptional event. This example illustrates the consequences of uh, the urban heat islands and the urban climate, but we also understand the impact on the region of this uh, urban heat island, we know in the future that this kind of heat wave event will become more frequent. A uh, specific study was conducted on the Paris area based on the analysis of a projection exercise uh, on uh, local models. And the uh, results I'm showing on this graph reveal us that uh, in 2011, in 2100, sorry, heat waves should become not only more frequent, but also more marked and more intense. We can expect in 2100 in the Paris area, one to two heat wave events per year, meaning approximately 11 days of heat wave every year. If we combine the urban climate and the urban change, we have reason to believe that urban vulnerability should increase in the future. Another question should be asked. Or rather, we need to think of another consequence, the energy consumption. Because of global warming, we can expect that more energy will be needed for heating purposes or for air conditioning. We already have observed an increased use of air conditioners in town. And quite possibly in the future, there will be uh, peaks of overconsumption of electrical power in the summer because more people will be needing air conditioning. Institutional players and land planners and um, urban planners have been looking into this problem and are thinking about uh, strategies that cities should adopt to adjust to those problems. Imagining strategies for towns is a difficult exercise because we're looking at a very long time scale, a very long deadline, the end of the 21st century. And for such a long time scale, we need to take into consideration the regional impact of the climate change, but also the way towns and cities are going to evolve due to demographic pressure, urban expansion, the changes in architectural uh, strategies, and also the way uh, the lifestyle is going to evolve, involving the use of energy and electrical power. Therefore, we know now that it is absolutely essential that we approach the problem with a systemic and interdisciplinary approach so that all of the processes are taken into consideration or at any rate a large number of processes that will be combined. This is the way some uh, project research are being conducted with the help of experts from various disciplines to, in order to study the processes together, for instance, people who specialize in climate, 
urban climate, architecture, urban planning, economy, geography, human and social sciences. And increasingly, institutional players are being involved in the type of project. Recently, several research projects were conducted uh, on the uh, city of Paris and the surrounding area, and by combining the results, we can start generating some quite interesting results. The first studies looked into the impact of the uh, urban planning policies if we consider Paris and the surrounding area, and also the impact of uh, large city expansions in the future. These are the results for Paris uh, with a deadline in 2100. Two different scenarios were compared, one in which the town would continue expanding and would be allowed to do so with no limitations, encouraging the uh, construction of low-density residential areas all around Paris. The other scenario is that of a more compact city where land planning policies uh, would prevent extension. So the existing town would become more dense, densified, and there would be more people living together in collective housing. The question is, how are both strategies going to impact the phenomenon of urban heat islands and urban climate? According to the results, the urban heat islands are not really impacted by the shape and the size of the town. It remains more marked in the central area, Paris intramuros, and the uh, near suburbs, and the impact is quite comparable in both scenarios. However, if we look at the results under a different perspective, bearing in mind the way the population is distributed in the town, the results could be interpreted in different ways. When we're looking at the bottom scenario, the compact town, the population will uh, go be concentrated in the uh, center of Paris, Paris within its walls. These, uh, this area would become more vulnerable and more likely to be affected by uh, the urban heat island. Whereas uh, we see on the graph on the right hand side that in the event of a heat wave, the situation would be less favorable if we're looking at a compact town rather than an extended town. Strategies to adjust to climate changes uh, and to such phenomena as uh, urban heat islands often uh, make use of uh, greening processes. If we wanted to assess this strategy on the large scale, it was necessary to conduct a study. So such a study was organized in Paris, looking at various uh, greening systems. One strategy consisted in greening the roofs in many buildings in uh, Paris to test the strategy. But another part of the strategy encouraged the reintroduction of open ground vegetation, such as lawns or uh, mixed vegetation, lawns, gardens, and trees. If we're interested in cooling down the temperature in the streets, open ground vegetation seems to um, do a better job than uh, green roofs. Intuitively, we understand that the more trees and lawns we have in town, the greater the cooling effect. And the results will be improved when we have a mixed type of vegetation, uh, lawns and trees, then uh, a single type of uh, vegetation. However, green roofs will have a very limited impact on the uh, street temperature. But green roofs do have a number of uh, positive uh, effects and benefits. For instance, energy consumption, because uh, these uh, green roofs so will play an insulative uh, role on the buildings and they will reduce energy costs or energy consumption. First, because uh, there will be less heating needed in the winter and less air conditioning in the summer. The various uh, greening strategies may 
play a positive role, a beneficial role on uh, urban climate and living style for people living in urban areas, improving biodiversity and leisurely uh, periods for the inhabitants. But we cannot imagine any strategy without taking into consideration the fact that there will be water needed to maintain the uh, green areas. On this graph, the uh, upper bars show the water consumption associated with the uh, various greening strategies tested. We can easily understand that in the future, if we were to uh, use greening strategies, we would be faced with uh, an issue of water consumption, especially during the summer when the rivers are at a low. And in order to conclude, based on the results of the studies and our current knowledge regarding uh, global and climate changes, I don't think we can uh, imagine cities in the future without air conditioning uh, to make uh, living conditions more comfortable. But an unlimited uh, use of air conditioning will be a, s a cause for concern, not only because too much energy will be used, and also because this is probably going to worsen the urban heat island problem. Air conditioners tend to release hot air in the street, and therefore temperatures in the streets will increase increase. There are ways to decrease the demand uh, for electrical power, for instance, uh, greening strategies, but also we can think about improving energetic efficiency of the buildings. We know, however, that the way people behave in town and the way they use energy is surely going to play an essential role on the efficacy of all the strategies that will be implemented. Simple things such as the uh, habit of closing the shutters during the day or a uh, smarter and more efficient use of air conditioning will have a very uh, essential role on uh, uh, climate uh, changes and energy consumption. I uh, think we should be encouraged, uh, we should encourage the population to think of this problem and become aware of the problem so that they can be educated to adjust their daily behavior in their houses but also in the office and in their working place.